CES is a technology show and it's exciting for some people. Um, some of the technology relates specifically to uh, our, our business, the media advertising business. Some of it doesn't. Um, what are some things in technology that you're interested in, either that you would expect from the show floor or simply things that are emerging, platforms that are emerging that you're keen on or that you think are worth investment or worth looking at that are bubbling up? Well, we've thought for a while that the Consumer Electronics Show, when we look at it, is really the connected experience show. So still CES, but a different kind of CES. And so the big picture that we're looking at is to see what is connected, how it's connected, what are the interfaces to that connection is, and what that means for brand marketers. And so whilst we'll all be dazzled by screens of greater resolution, and we'll see some great advances, I think, this year in terms of the affordability and the size of OLED-based screens. I think the processing that is making those things happen, which is really chips from NVIDIA Tegra and you know Qualcomm's latest Snapdragon chips that are going to enable things in a different way are exciting. I think the idea that two or three years ago a 4K screen was a new, new thing but now we can do 4K streaming, which is a new, new thing because the availability of chipsets and bandwidth, I think is all super exciting because that changes the consumer experience um, enormously. I think more broadly, we'll be looking a lot at IoT and I think advertisers are gonna be super interested in IoT, both for the data that it collects on a consumer basis and also the new interfaces people have with content and commerce and everyone's seen what Echo can do and what Google Home can do and those will be big focuses so I think a lot of what we see at CES actually touches our world and obviously the automotive area touches our world too and it's kind of interesting to see a convergence in some of this chipset stuff you know we were all dazzled a few years ago about what quad core and eight core chips would do in the Intel world and now we're looking at whatever they are 256 core and beyond chips that are going to enable a whole different kinds of interconnectivity and decision making and as uh, at least one of my colleagues talks about it the interesting moral dilemmas faced by the autonomous vehicle is do I save the occupant or do I save the pedestrian <laughs> Rob, in uh, television, going through a big transformation, there'll be a lot of programmers there, um, a lot of advertisers who are your clients who are curious about the opportunities around television in a world where ratings are dropping for some and um, changing habits are changing uh, for uh, viewers and their expectations are on ad load and the kind of units they want they don't want, the lure of subscription services. Uh, what are some of your thoughts about the changes of television right now and what your clients are looking, looking for? Well, I still believe from a consumer point of view, best available screen rules everything. If you can consume something on 60 inches of OLED rather than on a mobile device because you've got the time and the privacy and the access to the asset to do that with, then that's what you'll do. Uh, I think there's going to be a huge competition over the next year for different channels and program makers to get themselves into the skinny bundles that I think will become more and more uh, popular uh, during the year. I think that you know Netflix for, for many people is almost a single asset skinny bundle as Amazon Prime is a, almost a single asset skinny bundle. And one of the interesting bits of calculus for the consumer is going to be how do they go about assembling their entertainment portfolio. So they'll be choosing a pipe into their home, which will carry data. They'll be choosing a data plan from a mobile carrier, which may or not be from the same people as the pipe into their home is coming from. They'll be thinking about then a entertainment lineup, but not just an entertainment lineup. They'll be thinking about the entertainment lineup in terms of where they consume it, in terms of the devices in and out of home. And we're actually asking the consumer to put together a really complicated puzzle piece. And for some people might be, oh, actually what I want is I just would like the, maybe I want some broadcast channels and I'll have Amazon Prime and Hulu. That will cover all of my needs. There may be other people that say, actually, I just need Amazon Prime and what, GSPN. 
for example. And we're asking people to piece things together in a very interesting way. What I wonder looking beyond that is whether some of the advantage advances in the set-top box world, some of the capabilities of Comcast Xfinity X1 product and so forth, are going to change the way people think about the connectivity hub in their homes and think about the relationship with content. And when you think about areas like home security and home management and other stuff bundled along with entertainment and communications. It may change the dynamic, but I suspect that we're going to see a bit of a change in the language and the dialogue in the way that people market entertainment products and market connectivity products. I get this feeling that expressions like double play, triple play and quad play are feeling a bit old. And I think there's going to be a new dialogue in much the same way that Intel did 286, 386, 486. Oh, damn, we'll do Pentium. And you sort of change the world. And I think some of that language is going to change. And people will have some fun, I think, or some people will have some fun trying to work out almost like the way you think about buying a stock portfolio, or the few people that have stock portfolios think about it, is how would you set the parameters to optimize what your entertainment and comms package is? And I think we need to sort of create an e-harmony for personal entertainment and communications. And so we'll get to that, well, I like to do this and I like to do that and the kinds of shows I like to watch this and I might like to call people this often, but I prefer to do this in this way and I like to do things out of the home. Press the button says, ah, what you need then is a 50 gigabit broadband connection, a data plan on your mobile device that does this, and Amazon Prime, watch ESPN and broadcast channels, and that's the optimal solution. That's your date with technology, because it's getting harder and harder and harder for people to work out.